Hey guys, it's Prince Rich with Rich Technology Group, and in today's video, I'm gonna do an in-depth review of one of Lightner's newest headsets, the LH375 Smart Set. So some of you may recall that we actually did a previous video approximately about a month ago, which was an unboxing and first impressions of this headset, the Lightner LH375. And at the end of that video, I promised that after I was able to use this headset for a bit for our own and office usage, I'd come back to you guys and let you know my honest thoughts, pros and cons. So here's what I gathered and here's my honest thoughts after using this thing for about three weeks for our day-to-day -day business needs in the office. Okay, so starting with the pros, first and foremost, it's dual ear. For those of you who frequent my channel and you've seen me do many other reviews on many other headsets, you probably noticed that I'm not too keen on the single ear with headsets. So this thing having dual ear for me is just an absolute treat. Why? While I do typically prefer a single ear for my phone calls, dual ear is best when listening to media and things like that. That brings us to one other pro, which is the biggest pro of this device, probably the biggest advantage that this, de this device has over most all of the other Lightner devices, is it is a three-in-one. This device has the ability to be connected to your phone on the desk. It also can connect Bluetooth, like to a Bluetooth device, whether that be a tablet or television or cell phone. Typically, most people would use this for cell phone. And then the other thing is it has the ability to be connected to your computer. The way that you achieve this whenever I was using it is quite literally, you have a various different amount of cables plugged up to this base here, which I'll explain in a bit, and you simply switch back and forth between your phone, a Bluetooth device, or your laptop or desktop computer by simply pressing this button. And it tends to work pretty seamlessly based on what I gathered in using this over the previous uh, month. Now on the back of this device here, it has a few different plugins and interfaces, but the ones that are most important is the two that you would use for a hook switch, which I won't go, well, you know what, actually we'll go ahead and grab the hook switch. So this here is an actual hook switch and essentially without going into a long drawn out explanation of what this is, this is a cable that allows you to, to typically connect the base of any type of headset to your phone and it gives you the ability to answer and hang up calls from the actual buttons that are on the headset. Um, there may be a way to work around it, but with most headsets that I've seen and used and reviewed, typically the only way to answer and cancel or hang up on calls is with a hook switch. So I did use this plugged into the back of the base for the remainder of the time that I actually used this. Also, as you can see here on top, there's also actually a plug-in for a DC type adapter that plugs into the wall, so an AC-DC adapter, which is actually over here. It's a bit of a mess, but there it is. Pretty straightforward, it's your power adapter. Um, from what I understand, something like this does not run off a of PoE, so you definitely have to use the adapter, but the adapter actually comes inside of the box. The other interface is a USB cable that you can see here. It's like a mini or micro type style USB cable, which is actually here. Um, that I had hooked directly into my USB hub that was connecting to my laptop so that I could have the ability to just press the button that I showed you guys on the base that just goes straight to my laptop. So quite literally, I could be on a phone call with somebody while I had this thing connected to my Polycom or Yealink phone. And then once done that call or even during that call, I could push this button and switch over to my computer and talk or be heard on a virtual meeting or something like that, as well as use it to do things like listen to media, such as like a voicemail to email or listen to a YouTube video or listen to a music channel like Spotify or Amazon Music or something like that. So I've pretty much covered all of the bases as far as what it can connect to. It is a three-in-one. So again, computer, 
Bluetooth device such as tablet or laptop and then connect to an actual desk phone for those of you who are still using a desk phone. Let's talk about the actual headset itself and talk about overall battery life, comfort, and what my experience with that was. Okay, so the headset itself, what can I say? It's very comfortable. Um, that was never an issue. It actually is just as comfortable and feels almost as heavy and feels similar to its little brother, which you guys have probably seen me review before, the Lightner LH270. Now notice the main difference between this 375 and the 270 is the 270 is a single ear, same type of chassis, but it's a single ear. And also the 270's base has only just the ability to connect to a phone and to connect to a computer. It does not have the ability to connect to a Bluetooth device of sorts or anything like that. So as you would imagine, because this is basically a bigger, or I guess we'll say dual ear and better and more advanced version of the LH270 from Lightner, I expected the quality and the overall experience of it to be similar, if not better, to the LH270. But nonetheless, I find that it's lacking in a couple of areas, and I find that the 270 was not only a bit more reliable, but also of better quality. So let's get into that, which is some of the cons that I wanna chat with you guys about. Okay, so for those of you who may or may not know, I've reviewed a lot of headsets in this office, and Lightner's LH270 is, or was for us thus far, without question, the headset that had not only the best sound quality, but also the best noise cancellation. Um, that was not the case with this. Um, I wouldn't say that the sound quality and the noise cancellation on the LH375 is bad, not at all. It just did not hold up to equal quality, at least from what we gathered, um, in regards to the previous headset, the LH270. Um, for starters, the Bluetooth we noticed from callers that we talked to, and I tested this on two different phones, a Yealink and a Polycom that we connected this to, the Bluetooth notably did not have the call quality that I would have expected out of the previous 270 or better when connecting to the phone. Um, when I contacted Lightner support, which is actually excellent support, they basically told me right off the bat that the Bluetooth, they don't know if it's basically the way that Bluetooth handles the compression of packets or the way that it transmits the data, but they said that most users have had better success out of the overall call quality connecting it via USB to their phone or you know through the hook switch or whatever, the USB to their computer or to the hook switch to their actual um, you know uh, desk phone versus using the Bluetooth. So that was something that we noticed uh, right off the cuff. Their support actually helped me disconnect the Bluetooth and then connect this to USB and through the hook switch to the phone. And we noticed a notable, you know, better overall increase in sound quality right off the bat, almost immediately. So for those of you who are wondering, during the testing that I did for about a month, I actually used this headset with two different phones. I used it with the Polycom CCX600, which is a newer, very high-end phone, which I want to say runs for approximately about $700 to $800. And I also used this with the famed, but older, it's about two generations old, Yealink T48S. Both of those phones, the Polycom CCX600 and the Yealink T48S are both uh, touchscreen phones and they're both Bluetooth capable. I did test and use this headset with Bluetooth with both phones and I found with both phones the sound quality was lacking. Like there was more to be wished for in regards to the overall sound quality not only reported back to me from the person that I was speaking with but also with just the audio that I could hear coming from the other person. Um, so I don't know, I feel like there's something missing or something lacking there in regards to the quality of the Bluetooth data transmission with the LH375, but I could be wrong. Um, in regards to using the hook switch, I did use the hook switch on both phones, the Poly CCX600 and the Yealink T48S. Call quality was significantly better. Um, I actually had more or less no issues with the Yealink T48S. 
It picked up phone calls perfectly. It hung up phone calls perfectly. Nobody ever really complained about the sound quality. Although people that know me well did say that the sound quality sounded okay, but not quite as good as my LH270. Um, as far as the Polycom CCX600, I had some very strange issues using the hook switch. Um, one of the issues that I had, and it may have just been a Polycom issue, I don't know because I didn't experience it with the Yealink was calls would come in and when calls came in when I was hooked up to the computer side of it, which would be this here, when calls came in and I was connected to computer, this would never hang up. Um, even if the call on the other end, the person stopped calling and they left me a voicemail, or I took the or I uh, sent the call to voicemail, like rejected the call or ignored it. This part would still keep doing a tap 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 tone in my ear. I don't know if that was the hook switch. I don't know if that's a Polycom firmware thing or if it's a thing that Lightner would have been able to fix if I had a contacted them. But that was the only issue that I had that I know of with it. So let's talk about noise cancellation. Um, the noise cancellation, at least in my opinion was pretty much on par with the LH270 or with other Lightner headsets that have really good noise cancellation. Um, for those of you who may or may not know, Lightner typically has some of the best noise cancellation that I have personally laid my hands on. It's usually better than Plantronics. It's usually better, better than Jabra. They have some of the best noise cancellation that I have dealt with um, across most all of the headsets that I've reviewed. Um, and I've talked to many people and asked them, hey, how did this sound compared to the other headset? And the Lightner tends to hold up. Now, I'm not saying the noise cancellation isn't bad on this thing, not at all. It's still exceptional, but it just didn't seem as good as what I've experienced with some of the older Lightner headsets, which is strange because this chassis looks and feels almost the same as the others. So I don't know if it's maybe a difference in the technology or maybe it was me. Could be the phone that I was using, but I'm not totally sure. Last but not least, the only other con that I could think of, which is a big one for me is, you know, I like most people, I like the idea of having a headset that can serve all my uses. Using my mobile app on my cell phone, for example, connecting to my desk phone, which sometimes is a Polycom, other times is a Yealink, other times may be a VTech or, or a Snome or something. And then the other one is connecting to my computer so that this headset, which is a dual ear, which was the big plus for me, which was the big bonus, can be doubled and used to do things like listen to Netflix on my computer or listen to a YouTube video or listen to some music. While it could do that and it connected up just fine to all of these you know, appliances or applications, the sound quality is not that great. If you're thinking about using this headset to listen to things like music, YouTube, whatever, Netflix, you can do it, but the sound quality, it almost seems like the headset is designed specifically to have great sound quality output for phone calls, not for things like media, like listening to music or movies or YouTube videos or whatever. Um, in short, it sounds extremely tinny, very, very tinny and almost kind of robotic. Um, in comparison to what you would get out of a headset that is designed to listen to music or what you would get out of a headset that is designed to watch movies and, and hear you know high quality media or audio. Okay, so in conclusion, do I think the Lightner LH375 smart set is a great investment? It depends. If you're somebody like me and you don't need to rely on your headset so much for media, like listening to YouTube, all that kind of stuff, you're more interested in stuff like the noise cancellation, the high quality call, you know, the high quality audio in your ear when you're listening to other people talk and you like a dual headset versus a single ear, I think it's absolutely a great headset. And it's also an added bonus to be able to switch back and forth between Bluetooth computer and your actual desk phone. I think it's a good idea. If you're looking for a headset that is a three-in-one but has impeccable audio quality when switching over to media, such as listening to you know, a YouTube video or listening to a voicemail to email that you need to hear impeccable quality on, on your laptop or computer, and you want a high quality sound that doesn't sound tinny or a little robotic, I wouldn't say that I would recommend this headset. Um, I don't know right off the top what headsets would be the best 
that couple between having excellent or perfect audio for usage with an IP phone or mobile app, as well as usage for listening to media. Um, maybe I'll review one like that in the future. Maybe Lightner will come out with one, who knows? But I feel like this headset, like its little brother before it, the LH270, is designed mainly to give you the best audio experience and the best noise cancellation experience for business communications, such as through your mobile app or such as through your actual desk phone. I feel like having the Bluetooth and having the connectivity for the laptop to be able to listen to media is an added bonus, but to be able to create or manufacture this headset in a way to where the audio quality is on par and has perfect pitch for flawless media listening, I feel like that would sacrifice the quality of things like phone calls and also things like um, uh, phone calls and things like noise cancellation. This headset actually goes for approximately $349, whether you get it from headset.com or whether you get it from Amazon, which might be a tiny bit cheaper. Um, I'll have the links below in the description. Um, I like the overall design. It's extremely comfortable. I like the fact that it's dual ear, but that's my only biggest complaint is that the Bluetooth left me hoping for a bit better quality of Bluetooth um, experience and the audio and listening to media could be a lot better. But again, I don't know that that's possible without sacrificing it having really good quality for what it really is used for, which is great business communications by way of a good audio experience when you're listening to your person that you're talking to on the phone and also having excellent noise cancellation, which in my opinion is most important and what also what Lightner is known for. Um, if you found this video helpful, go ahead and give it a like. Um, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. You are watching the number one channel on YouTube for all things voice over IP and business communications related services, accessories, and education. So be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any of our content when we put it out. As always, this is Prince Rich with Rich Technology Group, your go-to guy for the best deals on business, phone, and internet service in the United States. I'll catch you guys again in the next video.